Today we're going to discuss our top products of 2023. I know we're a little bit late on this, but hey, you know what they say, better late than never. So this is basically the re the products that I have reviewed during the course of 2023 and the products that I think were standouts that are very memorable that really resonated with me personally. Are they going to be the best in their categories out of everything out there in the world in 2023? Probably not, but these are the ones I deem are worthy of a Shane Lee Award. Worthy. Worthy of the Shane Lee Award. All right. So what we're going to do here, we're going to kick this off in the first category, which is going to be receivers. So I'm going to do like two, two tiers. I'm going to do like the best, the top tier, and then like the more affordable tier. All right. So kicking off this list is going to be, we're going to start this off with AVRs, receivers. And for 2023, I think the best AVR for 2023 is going to be the Denon AVR A1H. That's a bad mother. Yes, it is. This receiver is $6,500, and it is also Denon's flagship AVR for the year. This is a 15.4 AVR, so it's got 15 channels plus four independent channels. And as of recently, it did get the update for Dirac multi-base management. So you will have four distinct subwoofers, independent subwoofers that Dirac can base management. So you can get the best, most cohesive base response, frequency response in your home theater. Don, have you heard this thing? I have actually. <clears throat> it's, um, it's a beast. So back in the day, you know, when I was a boy back in the day, we used to have a lot of great flagship receivers and Denon has made some of the best of all time. And really it's kind of a, a, a throwback to the big monster AV receiver. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to, to beat this with separates. I mean, you'd have to spend a substantial amount of money to best this. It's a really nice piece. It is a fantastic piece. Definitely for sure. I, still have the review that i have i just got to release it and edit it and put it together and now that the direct base management has come out i have to rework that into the review but that is the best receiver that i've heard for 2023 and that is you know a flagship tier product it is pretty expensive it's six thousand five hundred dollars but, but coming in runner up which i would say still flagship territory but also affordable would be the sony AZ 7000 ES. I've heard that a lot. This is a 13.2 channel receiver, also 150 watts per channel. $3,300 for this bad boy. It's actually a really nice amp. It is very um, nice. When, when Sony wants to make a world class audio product, Sony does it. And they have many times over the years. And this is no exception. It's a It's a fantastic piece. Great video processing on it, easy to use menus, um, and that that Sony trickery that they do that that room calibration actually works really good. Their proprietary setup it, it's a it's a nice amp. Yes, it's a very nice amp, very affordable too. And uh, like I said, Don said it does have that that room correction, which if you blend it in with your Sony capable television set, compatible television set, you can use the actual TV to mix okay. in as a center channel with the actual center channel. So it sounds like the vocals are coming directly from the screen. Next category we've got for amplifiers. I actually only really did one amplifier this year. And this award is gonna have to go to the NAD M23. This is a two channel amplifier. It's two by 260 watts. It does use Purify Class D amps, and the price is three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. <throat> this that is a killer amp. I think Gene said it was the cleanest measuring amp he's ever measured. Correct on an audio precision. It, it's a phenomenal amplifier, and it looks great. Doesn't right. weigh much. I mean, nah, uh, these Class D amps are very light. <clears throat> but well, it's Class D. It, it's yeah. superb. Yeah, fantastic sounding. I mean, it sounded very much just like the, I think it was the M28 that I reviewed, I think last year. Yeah, yeah so that's the uh, seven channel version. This is the two channel version. Um, only difference it. is, 
it's got more wattage, got more power behind it. It's very clean, very quiet sounding amplifier, uh, musical amplifier. Although I will say that um, if I'm going to put it up against something like the Parasound, I, I think I reviewed a Parasound monoblocks earlier in the year. That one had a little bit more oomph to it. It's more bass. This one's yeah. a little bit light, lighter on the bass, the NAD is, but uh, it's just like clean details. I, I had a JC5 at my house for a year and it was a great yep. amp. I would yeah. take this amp over it. Yeah. Uh, great sounding amplifier. And it doesn't cost too much money. So if you're an audiophile guy, you want to keep it, you know, high end sound, that, that nice audiophile, crisp, clean sound without breaking the bank, the NAD M23 might be the ticket for you. All right. So next one up is going to be streamers. This is an accessory. For the top streamer here that we're going to mention is going to be the Hi-Fi Rose 520. This does cost, th okay, $3,700 for the Hi-Fi Rose. So it's, uh, it's, a little, it's a little pricey. But Don, have you heard this thing? Several times. It's a great piece. And <clears throat> you know what I like about it too, not besides the audio performance, is this the front panel on that thing is pretty much the coolest yep. front panel on any piece of gear. Out yeah, there. It's dope. Yeah, so this is an Android-based product streamer. So you do get there's a there's an app store into it built into it. You can download apps like Cobuzz, Title. I think Apple Music is on there as well. You just log in with your account. You can either you can function you can operate the entire thing from the front panel. It does have a remote control, or if you would rather, you can use the Hi-Fi Rose app, which uh, you know works with Android ios and no strangely enough usually with android products i'm very used to android products I have, i've owned nothing but android phones my entire android cell phone owning career typically android products whether it's a movie streamer cell phone they usually get a little janky after a while they get a little bogged down they get they get a little slow look at your sony tvs always a little slow but this product actually has remained snappy throughout like i haven't noticed any kind of hiccups or anything like that this is the Hi-Fi Rose 520, 3,700 bucks. So that'd be more in the, oh, and let's not forget that this is, uh, there's actually amplifiers built into this. So you, you don't- know, On the Hi-Fi Rose? Yeah. So that would be more on the, on the higher echelon of streamers. But for the more affordable streamer, we do uh, have wow. the Ever Solo DMP A6. This is $1,200. This does not have amplifiers into it, built into it. So you will have to hook this up to a preamp, an amplifier, receiver, what have you. But <clears> this <throat> is also an Android powered device, very much like the Hi-Fi Rose. It's uh, super, the build quality isn't as nice as the Hi-Fi Rose, but uh, cool. for what it is, for 1200 bucks, it's a, it's a great looking piece. It's a giant killer. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I yeah. reviewed that with um, when I was doing a speaker review for powered monitors and fell in love with it. It's a dude for the money it's yep. just wonderful it's really cool looking it's a nice piece yeah uh, it operates the same way as hi-fi rose you know like i said it's android based you can operate everything from the front panel there's an app store built in you can download download all your apps you got uh Cobas, Tidal, apple music it's great there's an app as well uh, i don't recall if there's a remote control or not though um yeah i don't think they ever solo doesn't have a remote yeah you're gonna have to use the app app with it or just the touch panel Man, but I those are the I got one to throw in there, but you didn't review it. So is it a streamer? Streaming app. It's the uh, Cambridge Audio Evo 150. It's three thousand dollars. The Cambridge. It's a streaming amp. It's oh. the Evo 150. It has 150 times two and eight ohms with Hypex amplifiers. It it's on par with both of those. It's a killer piece, dude. Similar in size to the Hi-Fi Rose. It's bigger than ever solo, but. Um, you know, I'm driving sixteen thousand dollar pair of speakers with it and driving the, the driving them to death. It's a killer piece. But uh, I guess all right. So that's that's three for our streamer category: Hi-Fi Rose five twenty, DMP A six Ever Solo, the more affordable one for twelve hundred bucks, and then the um, the Evo. Cambridge Audio hmm? Evo one. Well, I guess that would be high end. That's three thousand bucks. So next category we've got here are speakers. I think you guys know what speakers are going to be my favorite for this year. It is going to be the Perlison R5T Towers. <laughs> These bad boys are $4,000 each or $8,000 for the pair. This is their 
R series, not the S series. The S series, they're more upper end line of speakers. This is their more affordable. And I did the full reviews. You guys should definitely check out the full review. I reviewed the entire R setup, but I would say that this is like 90%, 95% of what I heard with the S series at like half the price. So if you do want to get like some high end home theater slash a audiophile esque speakers, I would say the Prolison R series is up. They're really, really close. Where it's at, yeah. Super close. Super close. And these are also THX certified. So if you want to get, you know, that badge, that guaranteed badge of performance that you can get, some people don't care about the THX badge, some people do, but just know if it has that THX badge, you will be guaranteed a certain level of performance. Are those dominant certified or ultra? I believe they're ultra certified. And then we got the runner up, me and Don. We heard this at the show together. These are the Elac, <laughs> Elac Solanos. Elac in the house. Yeah, those things are, they defy logic. Yeah, these are the 287s. These are half the price of the Perlissons. These are $2,000 each, so $4,000 for the tiny, pair. Tiny little speakers. Very, very small speakers for sure. Small towers, rather. But man, I'll tell you what, the amount of bass these things, buddy. Insane. I, we're, we're like, we all hiding a sub now. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got a sub up in here somewhere. They did have a sub in the back. And I, I went, I walked back there and I was like, I was like, man, this thing, this is sub, these subs, this yeah, sub is not on. We both heard them when we looked at each other. We're like, damn, dude. Yeah. Well, this has got a uh, ribbon tweeter. And uh, I believe it's got two five and a quarter inch drivers. Man, wow, just amazing. I mean, if you guys are fans of Ribbon Tweeters, uh, it's kind of nice, kind of a light, airy top end to it. The bass, like I said, is phenomenal sounding. Man, if you are really, if you want to get some fantastic sounding speakers, you don't have space for a subwoofer, these are the ones. They'll you got to get them. They'll blow your mind. They're really that good. Blow your mind. Like, of all the crazy expensive high-end stuff we hear audio shows, sometimes yeah. a product just grabs you and you're like, wow, yep. and that, that's one of those products. So those are... Uh, you know, just your typical speakers. Those are tower speakers. But for on-wall speakers, my winner is going to be the Ascendo Audio, Ascendo. the six. My man, Jeffrey, making it happen. You know, they employ a coaxial driver. The tweeter's in the center of the woofer. It's got a uh, six-inch uh, woofer, one-inch soft dome tweeter in the center of it. This is $1,300. It's a very svelte product. It's just a couple of inches deep, a few inches tall, super light feeling. So it's going to be easy to install in your home theater room. And the pinpoint accuracy on this speaker just is, sound phenomenal. I mean, I've had a lot of speakers in my home theater over the years, on-wall speakers. And these are, these are the ones that kind of really stuck out to me that made me want to say I should have these in my home theater because the imaging was spot on pinpoint accurate you will have to use a subwoofer with them so you can't run these things full range or anything like that there's very little base out of everybody them. runs a sub dude yeah we always we always say that you don't need a sub ever if you're gonna go to that level you're gonna, you're gonna have a sub you're like ah so you will need a sub with these um these are 1300 bucks so not too expensive I, you know in the world of home theater speakers i don't think they're too expensive 1300 bucks each Obviously, if you're going to, you know, load up your room with like 24 speakers, it could add up. Output. They're very dynamic. Yeah, very dynamic speakers. They're going to fill your space no problem at all. And, um, you know, this is like their smaller one in the series. Well, there's, I think there's a smaller one below. I think there's like a five, and then there's a six. six and, a half and a five. And then there's a 10 and a 12. Ted, the 10. The 10s would be good for LCRs. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Next category we have is subwoofers so i reviewed one of these guys I, I actually reviewed a pair of these and usually i'm a really big fan of big subwoofers but these two 10 inch subwoofers just blew my mind these are the perlison r210s these are five thousand dollars a piece they will play down to 16 hertz in room is going to be a much lower. I think I got down to like digital sing, single digits down in my room. It's got built-in DSP, PEQs. You can download an app with them. You can change fit. You can do all kinds of stuff with the app. 
And the build quality on this is fantastic. I mean, this is like a little small concrete brick. I'm so enamored with this subwoofer. I really wish it came in a matte black or else I would probably still have them. A friend, a friend of mine just bought a pair of those. <clears throat> I mean, if you're going to do subs in a dedicated audio system, I can't think of a better sub to have. I mean, they're just accurate. They play loud, but they're super clean. They're so flexible. I mean, I know they come at a premium price, Yeah. but for the box built-in sub-powered speakers, they're hard to build. Now, you know, big, big theaters, other things I like, but the what can you say uh, other than they're just amazing? I mean, they use the push-pull technology, yep. which I'm a big fan of from back in the day with M&K. They're, they're wonderful. Yeah, so there's dual 10s in there, so one on the bottom, and then there's one on the front. So They're both active, too. Yeah, both active. Cool. And then my runner-up, so that would be like the flagship subwoofer that I reviewed last year. But then the runner-up, man, pretty good as well. This is the RSL Speedwoofer 12S. Yep. Hard to tell from the photos, but this is a lot bigger. Obviously, it's 12-inch, but it's, it's a lot bigger than you would imagine. It's, it's actually probably about the size of a 15-inch, bigger than some 15-inch subwoofers, actually, They're, um, the enclosure I'm talking about here. There's a couple of presets. I think there's uh, three presets built into it for like movies, music, and uh, something else. For the money, nothing can touch it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's 800 bucks. And this thing has a, this thing can wallop hardcore. This also goes down to 16 hertz. In room, it'll go a little bit lower. Like I said, I mean, it's a huge subwoofer for the money, best bang for your buck type of product, because I know a lot of people want that best bang for your buck product. And the RSL Speedwoofer 12S is going to be it no it's a killer and it's a great company too they really care yeah about audio i mean they're great this next subwoofer is going to be out of reach for probably most people probably like the majority of folks on the planet i mean if you're going to put this in an airplane hangar you're going to want to get this subwoofer this is the ascendo v80 passive subwoofer you when you buy it you buy it with a 10,000 watt amplifier when you buy it, you have to build its own dedicated concrete room for it. So this is the driver by itself. It's an 80-inch subwoofer. This thing retails for about, it sells for about 140, 130, I think it was like 150, I thought it was. 150, yeah, it might be. Yeah, for about $150,000, give or take. You know, Maybe you get a dealer discount or something like that. But uh, this was the most impressive sub that I've heard. I don't think I've heard another subwoofer do the Edge of Tomorrow demo justice quite the same as this one does. Now that I've heard the Edge of Tomorrow demo on this subwoofer, I don't think anything uh, anything's going to top it, personally. I mean, this thing was just almost rattling the entire room apart. It's that impressive. It takes it, single digits. Dude, you... <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> We're talking like one hertz. That's just a that's just like organ vibrating bass. It's impressive to say the least. And if you want to hear this, they have that the the Arlitz Cinema out in Germany. You can hear it there. That movie theater is like better than any commercial theater I've ever been into. All hail the king. I mean, people talk about the Back to the Future subwoofer. I think this is bigger than the Back to the Future subwoofer. I think it is bigger. Yeah, yeah. it's huge. And the next one we have here are, is going to be movie players. Don, <laughs> who do you think is going to be the king dingling of movie players this year? Last year, sorry, 2023. Maybe Kaleidoscape? Oh my God, you are absolutely right. It is the Kaleidoscape. So the Kaleidoscape is... I can a, make that for $300 myself. <laughs> the Kaleidoscape is a very polarizing product. Most hated by the poorest product of the year. Oh, no. So the Cloud Escape is a, uh, listen, if you're a physical media fan and you're tired of the of the boxes and the cases, you want to streamline your collection, but get the same quality, if not better at, in certain on certain titles, the Cloud Escape is going to be for you. It is a very expensive product. Yeah, the, the entry fee for this product, if you were to buy it brand new, is about eight grand, eight to nine grand for sure. They typically do run some deals here and there, depending on where you get it from. Um, but this is it, man. This is uh, you download full copies, full bitrate movies. You're not streaming them onto the built-in hard drive, and it's a nice little uh, 
it categorizes them in a nice uh, poster wall and you get all the pertinent information just an overall easy to use product it is a pricey product no doubt but if you're a movie fan and you don't want to have all the clutter this is the best way i think no must no fuss plug it in buy your movie you're ready to watch it you don't have to do anything else and i would say the runner-up to this product would have to be the magnetar udp 900 4k blu-ray player this is a universal disc player this comes in it's also not very cheap but it's also not nine thousand dollars expensive this is uh, comes in at three thousand dollars and like i said it's a universal player so it'll play all of your cds dvds sacd 4k standard blu-ray it'll it'll play all the discs so if you want to use it for music also movies it'll also play back media files like your mp3s or mp4s you can do that as well that player will play them back as well so it's a universal player so if you are a fan of the opal players this is kind of like an opal player in disguise just reborn into the magnetar udp 900 the build quality on this thing is magnificent probably the best feeling best built disc player i personally ever held in my hands uh so the last category here is going to be under the accessories something you don't really need but maybe it'll make your life a little easier in your your hi-fi home theater journey first being i know don has used this before this is rune rune is a basically kind of just a, a it's a music software that you download and it puts all your music services together and also all your your backed up music puts them in nice little categories and album categories and whatnot it gives you all kinds of if you just want one if, if you like taylor swift you tap on taylor swift's name and it's going to bring up all the albums that she's ever made from your own personal collection to the collection on cobuzz or title and it just groups it all together and just makes it very easy to find um this is a it's a subscription based software. I believe you if you want to pay yeah, monthly. Have a server. You do have to have a server, yeah. A proprietary Rune server or a computer. Yep. Um, it's cool. I mean, if you like to tinker and set up some Rune's awesome. It's a big, great yep. audio file world. Do you need it? You don't need it. You don't need it. <laughs> you don't need it. But like I said, this is on the accessories. You got you know, if you had a lot of music on a hard drive or yeah, you know, SACDs or or FLAC files or and adding your streamers it's super cool i yep. played with it for quite a long time i like it yeah i mean not only do they have the uh the home uh the home program but you can also uh, access it from your vehicle and your mobile device as well so if you're on the go you want to listen to rune in your car it'll access what's going on at your house your home's library you can play it in your car as well so that's pretty cool yeah and this is a i believe it's like 1450 a month if you go monthly then if you pay for the year i think it's like 1250 a month and then i think there's a lifetime one for something like uh eight eight or nine hundred bucks for a lifetime like subscription it's a nice little product i dig it. i've been using it for the past few years yeah room's cool and then you no know, me we, t we spoke about this uh i want to say a couple of weeks ago it's been around for, for forever but this is the SVS SoundPath isolation feet. These are $50 for a pack of four. Don, have you ever used these before? Yes, they're great. That and the ISO acoustics. I like the ISO acoustics too, but yeah. it's much more expensive. Yeah, they're much more expensive. So if you want to isolate your, your sub out of your, you know, if you live in an apartment or something like that, you have people underneath you, you want to kind of do a couple of things. floor. I think it cleans up the sound a little bit. Yeah, for sure. It leaves it less... It leaves it uh, less boomy, a bit more tighter sounding, more yeah, still cleaner sounding. Before, but you're, you know, yeah, it, it's a great product. <clears throat> Products like this and ISO acoustics don't get enough love. Yeah, they do, they do a lot for a system. They're really great. I have tons of ISO acoustic products that I use. Yeah, and uh, you know, this is a this is a little product that doesn't cost a lot at all. I mean, it's fifty bucks, and then this is going to be maybe a in the same category as kaleidoscape mm -hmm. but this is the audio quest power quest 707 power conditioner power surge protector i reviewed this one i'm gonna say a couple months ago before i moved out here this is a 1300 dollars product 
and it does what it says. You can watch my video, my review. You can believe it or not. Um, this will protect your gear from like power surges, power strikes, clean up your power a little bit. You know, I reviewed the their other their flagship ones a few years back, the Niagara's, which I still have in my system. I have the three thousand in my system. I think that's like three thousand dollar product. This is coming in at thirteen hundred dollars. It's not all chrome. This is actually black, so it'll look a little bit better in your I home theaters. Does it have on it? I think there's eight back there. I believe there's eight. It could be more, but I'm pretty sure at minimum there's like eight. Um, there's like high current ones, and then there's uh, some other non high current ones. I forgot what they what they call them. Um, but this is a nice product. It's got a nice build quality to it. Nice look. Does what it says. I haven't had anything blow up yet in my audio gear, and I've had a couple storms. So I mean, <laughs> I guess it does what it's supposed to do. That is my list of standout winners. <laughs> What is on your list, guys? What are some standout products that had stuck out to you for last year? Leave your comments down below and let us know.